Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be teaching you how to make this planet gravity simulation using line forces. And line forces are very useful in the Roblox. They allow you to simulate many real life things with little to no math and or scripting. In fact, in this video, I don't use any scripting and I still get this result. And this is sort of inspired by one of my Unity games that I've made, and you guys should check that out if you haven't. And I use the same concept in Unity, but in Unity you had to use a bunch of weird math using like the gravitational constant and a bunch of formulas. But in Roblox, all you had to do is use these really nice line force constraints. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment if you want to see any more constraint videos. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So what exactly is a line force? So a line force is basically used to apply a force along a line between two points. It's like a vector force. But instead of applying a force in a certain direction, it applies it along a line. So let's demonstrate how it works. So I'm going to create a block right here. And then I'm going to duplicate it. Move it across real quick. There we go. And then I'm going to make a line force in between them. So I'm going to go to Model, Create, Line Force. And then we're just going to put an attachment there and drag it all the way over and put an attachment there. So this is a line force. It consists of two attachments as opposed to the one of the vector force. And it basically just pulls this part along, whichever part has a line force. So in this case, this part, it'll pull it along to meet that part. So let's just run it out with this default settings real quick. You can see it pulls it along and since this part isn't anchored, it just brings it along with it. Let's just anchor it so it looks a little bit better. You see it rails into it, and it's attracted to that part. And no matter where you put it, it'll always go towards the part in a line. So if we go to Model, Constraint Details, you can see when I drag it, you see that little arrow? It's pointing towards the part no matter where you put it. And so, to be honest, you could probably make a vector force do this as well, using a bunch of vector math. But this makes it a lot easier to do this without using any code whatsoever. And that's the benefit of using a line force. And a really cool thing with line forces is all the nice properties you have. So, let me unanchor this real quick to show you. One of the best ones is... The reaction force. So this basically makes it so that both parts are attracted to each other. So this is sort of like a magnet, for example. So you can see when you play, they both get attracted towards each other, which is really cool. And so along with being able to attract the two attachments using line forces, you can also repel them by setting the magnitude property, which is basically the strength of the line force, to a negative value. And that gives you something like that, which is quite cool. And also, you can turn on the inverse square law little thing. And this basically means that depending on the distance, or the inverse of the distance squared of the parts, the force will be reduced. So the, basically, the farther away a part is, the less force will be added. So you can see... They're, it's a lot slower initially, and the further they move out, the slower the parts will get. And this is this uses the same math that magnetism and gravity in real life use, which could lead to some very realistic behavior in your games. And speaking of gravity, we're going to make our planet gravity simulation right now. So let's get this set up. I'm going to delete these parts real quick, and we're going to use some spheres. Because spheres look more like planets than blocks, obviously. We're going to move this up. Then we're going to go to Workspace, Set, 
the gravity to zero. Oh, look at that. It's already set to zero. That's because I was setting this up beforehand. But usually it's at like negative like 192 or something like that. But just set it to zero so that when we run this, it floats. And we want this just so the normal Roblox gravity does not affect our parts. So we can simulate our own gravity. So let me just scale this up a little bit. Let's make it a little prettier. Let's make it a nice blue, like Earth. We can change it. Ah, that's a bad texture. Let's go sand. Ooh, that sand. That the sand actually looks pretty nice. So we're gonna leave it like that. Let's duplicate this. And I duplicated it with Control D. And then this can be the moon. Let's say. So let's make it a nice like, whitish color, and then change it to not cobblestone to like marble there we go so we have our two parts now let's go to model create and then line force and we're going to create a line force in between these two parts and the initial points of the attachments aren't really good because they're off center really you can use you can go to the line force and you can set the apply it center of mass to true but just for organization's sake, I'm going to position these attachments in the center of the part. And I'm going to do that by going to whichever attachment and then going to the position property, setting it to 0, 0, oh, 0, 0, 0. Don't set the world position to 0, 0, 0. Only set the like relative position, and that's because we want it to be positioned at the very center of the part, not at the center of the world. So let's do that with this next attachment real quick. There we go. And now let's set up our line force. So I'm going to turn apply it center of mass to true, inverse square law to true, leave the magnitude, and turn reaction force enabled to on. And because this is using Roblox physics, it takes mass and like stuff like that into account. So depending on how big the object is, the farther it'll pull it in. So like the bigger the object, the harder it'll be to move, and that's because of inertia. And so all the physics, like in real life, basically apply in here, which is really, really nice. So now all we have to do is if we were to run this, it doesn't look too good because the parts just slowly collide into each other. And obviously, if that were to happen in real life, there'd be a massive crater where the moon would collide with the Earth. But the moon has some initial velocity. And we're going to set that by going to the part. And let's quickly name this moon. And then name this part earth. There we go. And we can set the velocity on the z-axis to 5, let's say. So if you run this, oh, that was the wrong velocity. Okay, so let's set the velocity on the x-axis to 5. You kind of have to play around with it. There we go. So 5 might be a little too much. Let's reduce it a little bit to like 2. That should be a little bit better. And there we go. We have ourselves an orbit. And it's slightly elliptical. Actually, a little too elliptical. Let's increase our velocity to 3. You kind of have to play around with these settings. Because depending on the parts, it'll give you different results. So this is a pretty nice and stable orbit, and since the gravity is zero, it's perfectly level. And a very cool thing about this is you can see the moon, the moon's like rotating around or orbiting our little Earth ball right here, but this is also moving very slightly, but it is getting attracted by the moon, which is interesting because this is how it works in real life, which is very, very cool. Even though it doesn't really affect anything, when you add more more, and more objects into the workspace, you can see it'll make a cool little effect. So I set up here a, another little demonstration with obviously the sun in it. And it works sort of well, but at some point the moon collides with Earth, which probably isn't good, but you can see... You can have whole solar systems with this concept, though the magnitude does need a lot of tweaking when you want to do this. You could automate it by using 
scripts to get the mass of each object and then putting that into the magnitude. But if you guys want to see that, make sure to comment down below. And also, I had to manually set up the line forces. You can definitely automate that with scripting. So, also, if you guys want to see that, make sure just to notify me in the comments. But that's about it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Kind of a short one. But this is a really cool concept. You can make some really cool games off of this. But I just thought I would share this with you. And of course, we're marching through all of the constraints. We have done vector forces, line forces. We've done almost all of these up here, which is really nice. And... By the end of the year, we should have done every single constraint in Roblox. And I'll start doing some legacy constraints like body gyros or like rocket pul propulsions or whatever if you guys want that as well. Because some of those are pretty useful as well. But make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I hope you have a nice day. And goodbye.